everybody, it's Franny, and we're back working on our 3-2 Carrera project. Where we left off last time was we were going through doing a diagnostic process on the entire fuel injection system, and we came across one bad injector. So I talked to RC Fuel Injection, and they said, go ahead and send all six of them back, and we did. And, okay, it's a good thing we did because... So here is the sheet on those injectors. So of all six of them, one of them was closed, two of them were excellent, one of them was wide open, and the other two were fair. So boy, the injectors were just kind of a mess. So I'm really glad we sent all of them back and not just the one that I thought was being fussy. RC sends them back in this nice box here and every one of them is individually bubble wrapped. That's super nice. And take a look at the sticker on the inside of the box. Isn't that something? Yeah, they tell you to install these immediately and that was our problem last time. We waited an entire year, so these poor things had locked back up again. Next, I'm gonna reinstall all of the injectors, and then when we're done with that, I wanna run some tests on the fuel system. I wanna make sure the pump is putting out the right pressure, that the bypass valve is working, all that sort of stuff, and I wanna go through each one of these components. I know I've been through them a bit, but I wanna triple check every one of them and make sure they're all working properly. All right, well, let's get these injectors installed. We have all six of our injectors back in, went in pretty well. Now, one thing I wanna do though, since I've had all this apart, is just sort of double check for leaks. And one way we can do that is to run the fuel pump without actually starting the car. So let me show you how to do that. All we have to do is disconnect the plug on the DME relay here underneath the seat, and we connect pins 30 and 87B. So they're on the inside, the top and the bottom. I've hooked up a little switch here. So what we're gonna do is go around the back there and we're gonna double check for any leaks and make sure everything is okay. And then we'll go ahead and start the car. With my little remote switch here, let's go ahead and turn on the pump and make sure everything is okay. I do hear some tinkling. All right, I'll go ahead and turn it off. I did hear a little fluid moving around, which was kind of interesting. What I'm doing is checking each one of the injectors at the top there just to make sure they're not leaking. The injectors are all dry and I think what's actually happening is this has a return line as well. It goes all the way back to the tank. And I think the pump is actually pumping through and it's actually circulating going through the return line. So I think we're pretty good here. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna double check our fuel pressure. So I'm gonna be pulling this same cap that we pulled off when we drain the rails and I'm gonna hook up a meter to it and we'll see what kind of fuel pressure we have. I bought this complete kit that's a fuel pressure gauge here with a bunch of adapters. I'm not sure exactly what size that thing is. So I made sure I got a whole kit so I'd be able to use it on all sorts of different cars. The gauge goes all the way up to 140 PS. PSI, but we're looking for something, well, we're looking for less than 50 actually. But this gauge will work. So I'll get that cap off and we'll get our gauge attached. And as always, I have a fire extinguisher at the ready because I just want to be ready for any crazy that might happen. Well, I'm not having the best luck with my fittings, but I managed to get it on and it's pretty tight. I think it'll be good enough. So let's go ahead and test our static fuel pressure. So that's without the engine running. It should be about 2.5 bar or 36 PSI. All right, we turned on our pump and see our gauge here is, yep, looks pretty good. Yep, that's what it should be. That looks great. Now something else we can test now that we've come up to pressure, the system should hold pressure for uh, quite a while actually, that after 20 minutes, it should still read one bar or about 14.7 PSI. So I'm gonna let that sit for a little bit and we'll come back and see where it is. After about 15 or 20 minutes or so, look at that, we're still at two bar and our minimum should would be one bar. So I think we're good for our hold, our pressure hold test. Our next step is gonna be to start the car and we're gonna check the pressure with the engine running. Give 
giving it a second to just come back to life here. We're looking at our pressure. With the car running, we should be at two bars. And we're actually a little bit higher, but it looks like it's dropping back down a little bit. Boy, the engine sounds different, doesn't it? It's actually quite a bit smoother. That's kind of encouraging. Interesting, we've got a little bit of surging going on at idle. Whoa, that was interesting. Hmm, that's interesting, just died. Hmm, didn't expect that. Well, that's interesting, huh? I wonder why it died. Great question. There it goes, starts right up again now. Wow, that's really strange. It does it even if it's not idling. All right, let me shut it off. Well, sounds like we're not quite out of the woods here, huh? I'm not really sure at all what's going on. It's very odd. We have several more things to check, but, um, hmm. You know, that's kind of strange. The next thing I would like to check is the fuel pressure regulator. It's all the way sort of in the back of the engine back there. There's a vacuum line attached to it. So if I pull that vacuum line, we should see a slight increase in fuel pressure. So, all right, let me go ahead and start the car again. We'll pull that and see if we get our fuel pressure increase. Boy, that is just very strange. All right, well, let me pull this guy really quick. There we go. And yes, we did get our increase in fuel pressure. Put that back on, down it goes. So we know our fuel pressure regulator is working properly, but that's not our problem. Holy cow, let me shut this off. All right, well, the reason I wanted to do that, even though the engine isn't running well, is because that's kind of the last of our fuel pressure checks. I can go ahead and pull our meter now and cap that off. We've got other fish to fry though, huh? The engine, when it's running, sounds very smooth, so that's great, but holy cow, it's just all over the place. All right, well, let me go ahead and get this meter off and get the fuel system tidied back up again, and we'll see what we got. I'm back after a couple of days. Let's see how the engine is doing. Oof, not well. There we go. Whoa, almost stalled. Holy cow. Boy, it is very not happy about something, that's for sure. Even at high RPMs, it's not happy. That's not me goosing it at all. I'm holding it steady. and then it just dies. Hold on, just a sec. And the problem is getting worse as well. So when we first started the engine, it was running okay, at least it would hold its idle, and then you can kind of hear it start to miss, and it got worse and worse, and then it stalled. And then it started back up and it would run. Now it really won't run at all. Hmm. Well, we've got a few more things to check. I did check some of my, you know, wiring connections and things. I looked in the manual to see what could cause a problem like this, and one of the culprits would be that speed sensor, but we've replaced the speed sensor. It's brand new. And I went up underneath there to make sure that the bracket that it's sitting on, which is adjustable, I just wanted to check to see if that bracket was still solid or if it loosened up and moved at all, and it seems just fine. I did pull the sensor out to see if I could see anything visual that was wrong with it seems fine. Hmm, it's very perplexing. Now what we've got though is an issue that's covering the entire engine. So it's not just a single cylinder anymore. When we had a single cylinder out, you could tell it would run, it would idle, and it would just sort of 
it just felt low on power and just not as smooth as it could be. This is a very different problem, and this appears to be affecting the entire engine. So a great question is, well, what did we touch? We had the whole engine out of the car. I had the wiring harness here out as well. It's a very old wiring harness. Um, let's see, we've played around with that DME relay. That's another thing that can cause this problem. Anything that's, that's kind of in front of shutting off the entire engine and thinking about it and listening to it is as abrupt as it is, it doesn't seem like it's fuel to me. It doesn't seem like it's spitting and sputtering as much as it is just no ignition, but that's just a, that's simply a guess. All right, well, let's check a few more things. We can check our vacuum as well, but if the vacuum was bad, the engine would run. It would just, if depending on where the air was coming into the system, it would just run a little too fast or a little too slow. And it would, it's sort of, it's idle would be a little bit erratic, but not as choppy as this. This feels like it's something different. I made some notes of a few things we can test, but I think the first thing I wanna check is that coil. Now, I know it's not something we had out of the car, but we did replace all of the wires, but I would like to check that coil. It seemed like when we were running it before, do you remember the spark plug? When I was looking at it over here on this side, it wasn't really a bright blue. It was more yellowy, and it really should be a bright blue. And that's one of the things kind of sticking in the back of my head thinking, you know, bad coil would definitely cause this issue. So let's go ahead and take a look at the coil and see what we see. We'll test our meter. Here, I'm putting these two together, we should have zero, very close to it. So you can clip this on here and get a little better connection. There we go. Zero ohms, that's what we're looking for. Now across these two terminals, we should see 0.4 to 0.7 ohms, something like that. Here we are, 0.5, that looks pretty good. All right. For our high tension coil here, it should be something like five to almost nine ohms. Okay. And I'm getting an open circuit. So that's not good at all. It, <laughs> that's not correct, that doesn't look right at all. Hmm. The, the number on these are funny. This is terminal one, terminal four, and terminal 15. The 15 is bigger than the, than the one, so that's just what, how it's set up. Well, look at this. I'm getting nothing. That's really strange. And over here, you know, we get our 0.6, that's correct, 0.5, that's about right. But this one, getting nothing as if this is just an open circuit. So it may very well be that our coil is just not doing well at all. Hmm, well that's interesting. I don't know quite what to make of that. It's not a component we touched. That's the thing that's very weird. This is literally, I think, the first time it's ever been out of the car. Now, could it have failed? I suppose it could have, but it's a weird coincidence that it would have failed. We did see that yellowy spark plug, but Holy cow, huh? That seems just weirdly coincidental. Hmm, all right. Well, that sure was a little bit surprising, huh? I didn't expect the coil to be bad. On the bottom of the coil, if we look on the left side in the middle, you see those three digits, five, five, one? If we look those up in the Bosch timesheet, we see that 551 was actually produced in November of 1985. So this is a 1986 model car. So this is the original coil. All right, well, at this point, there's really not much more I can do on this. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut the video off here. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you got questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below and I'll get right to them. If you can think of anything else I should test on this, please let me know. Remember the sensors are brand new and we've been through pretty much everything. This is the original bypass valve. And remember what our symptoms are, that the car just absolutely dies. It just dies, and that's unusual. We don't have a bad idle or it's running a little rough. It just flat out dies. That's a very specific issue. 
I think I also want to take a look at, and I'll probably go ahead and replace that DME relay as well. On these cars, since that's a single point of failure, you really want to have a backup one. If you've got one that's known good, it should be in the glove box in case you're out driving around and that thing ever fails on you because there's no way you're going to get home if that thing's not working. So I'll probably go ahead and order one of those as well, just to be certain. And we can kind of knock two of those out. I'll have a spare. That'll be great. And we'll go ahead and get a new coil and see if that makes a difference. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below and I'll get right to them. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that now because you're not gonna wanna miss any of this. This is quite the cliffhanger here. We gotta get this car going. All right, well, thank you so, so much for watching. And as always, a very special thank you to our Patreon supporters. Until next time, safe travels. Bye.